to Wacomco County Library's summer reading program, Tales, of Wh Tales and Tales. This program is a video tutorial for the Take and Make kits for the Beaded Animal Craft. My name is Miss Vicki and I'm going to walk you through it. Some of you may have adults in your life that <laughs> have experienced and done these things, these particular crafts, uh, a lot, like me. Um, and if they have, great, you have an extra person that can help you. Um, the video tutorial also may be good to jog their memory if they can't remember exactly how it was done, like me. So, um, in each kit, you will have uh, enough beads for two out of the three creatures. Um, and each kit is going to be randomized. We're going to um, just hand them out, uh, and you're going to get one of three different versions. We're going to have wriggling reptiles. There's also one for awesome ocean life and marvelous mammals. And uh, each one's going to have three different creatures. You can choose to make two uh, of them and then um, show them off to your friends. Or if you'd like, you can even go get more beads and more key rings and make more of them because there's a lot of patterns out there on the internet, I promise. So today we're going to work, this time we're going to work on um, reptiles. In each kit, you should have received a, an adequate amount of gimp cord. Uh, it's because we were banded together. It's all one length usually, um, and you'll need to cut it down with a, a measured out with a yardstick and scissors. Uh, it also will have some key rings. It should have two key rings, so one for each of your critters. Um, they're not super exciting, but if you have a key ring at home you'd rather use, you're welcome to. Um, it also comes with a, a good amount of beads, um, some black ones and mostly green. Black ones for the eyeballs, because that's important. Um, I also recommend from home a bowl, at least one, because they will roll everywhere and you'll be chasing them, and you'll lose them and then you'll be able to finish your project. Uh, you'll need a pair of scissors. Uh, they could be just simple craft scissors, just the plastic ones with a metal blade is fine, as long as they cut through the cord. Um, you'll also need a ruler, or in my case, a yardstick. Because the cordage in the pattern is measured out by yards, you'll just need to take a, a ruler and measure it three times to make the yard, because there are three feet in a yard. I just like my yardstick because it unfolds. So, as we go, um, first thing you want to do is empty out your beads into a bowl or into a very careful pile if you don't have a bowl available. I'm going to go through and show you three different animals that you can do with this kit. Um, the first one I'll show you is the gecko. He is a little lizard and he is absolutely adorable. The second one I'll show you is Leech the frog. He is a little froggy and we'll go a little closer up and I'll show it to you each time I do him. Um, little frog. He's really cute. And my favorite of the kit is Coils the Snake because he's huge. Just so you know, if you make Coils the Snake, you may only have the enough beads to make the gecko as well because you may not have enough beads for the snake and the frog um, because the snake is just so massive. Uh, if you do want to do all three, uh, you are able to go and easily and inexpensively pick up beads and gimp cord and key rings from your local craft store. I got this at Walmart and Hobby Lobby locally. So those are absolutely easy enough. You'll also want to get some gimp cord. I picked up a pack here. This was a couple bucks, but not too expensive. And some just a pack of key rings you can get in the jewelry section, jewelry making or crafting section. So they're not hard to find if you wanted to continue or do more of them. Like I said, the internet is chock full of patterns for various animals and things that you can do, so the sky is the limit, essentially. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in um, and we're going to um, do each individual animal uh, close up so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Some of the parts are a little fiddly. Um, in, this, in the reptiles, it's not too bad. Some of the uh, ocean life and the mammals get a little fiddly, so it takes a little bit coordination, um, but I'll still show you how to do all of these. Again, thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. Um, just a side note, in case your internet decides to buffer or YouTube decides to have a fit, uh, each kit will also come wrapped in a picture instructions with pictures and written instructions so you can follow along. We just feel like a video may be a little easier to follow. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're gonna start with the gecko. The gecko is the one that requires the least amount of beads, so it's a good one to start off with because it'll be really quick. 
Um, this is Ricky the Gecko. When you get your instructions, you're just gonna have the one pattern because we're gonna trim it down, but um, Ricky the Gecko, and if you can see him right here, it says he requires two yards of cord and 58 beads. And this is the pattern, and I'll walk, walk through the pattern as well. Um, to hold your keychain still, because uh, from experience, uh, you definitely want to make sure your keychain has some tension or else it's going to look all types of wonky. I'm just taking some extra gimp cord that I have. You can use string. You can even do um, what I did when I was actually working on these in the first place. Um, I literally hooked it onto a cardboard box and used the cardboard box as a base. Um, because I don't have a cardboard box set up here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gimp cord and I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to take some packing tape. Nice, strong packing tape. There we go. Tear off a length of it, just like so. And I'm going to take my tape, my cord rather, and I'm going to tape it a little distance away from me. You wanna make sure you have some space to work. And you can leave this here um, for the duration of while you're working on your project. If this decides to work, cooperate, please. I'm just going to tape that down to the table and hope that doesn't slide out. So now I've got a little loop, which I can put this little key ring just onto and then flip it so it's like that because you want to hook your gimp onto the small end of the cord and it'll sit better in a minute. I'm going to use a different gimp cord color than the one you got in your kit because all of the gimp cord is in the kits. Um, so get rid of Ricky the Gecko has two yards of cord, which means I'm gonna pull out my yard stick and I'm gonna see if I can do this in frame. Um, and just take one end and put it over here. I'm gonna pull it over the other side and we need two of these. So I'm gonna pull down to one end and then I'm gonna pull it back without cutting to this end and then measure it out one more time and that'll be two yards. Come here. Take your scissors and just trim off. It doesn't have to be super precise. Like I said, this um, pattern tends to tell you you need more yardage than you actually do, probably because they'd rather you over measure than under measure. So let's get started. You don't need the scissors for a while and you don't need the ruler right now. Let's take our gimp cord and we're going to fold it in half, roughly, it doesn't have to be exact, pull it through until you have a little loop on the end. I'm gonna put that loop through your keychain. It's easier to do it through the large end and pull it through. And then you're gonna have a little loop on either side. The ring is right here. Your loop, take your other end, the loose, the two wobbly ends, and you're going to put it through here. Just thread it right through. Make sure you keep a hold of them. And then pull it so that you have a little knot. And you'll have two strings coming out and that's what you'll use to do your gecko. So, we have it started. With our gecko, we're going to start with green. So, if you look at your pattern, and once we get started, it'll be easy enough to follow along once you figure it out. Let's see if we get focused. Focus! Where'd you go? There he is, okay. You're going to start with your key ring right here, and then it, shows, it tells us to do one bead. So when they show you to do one bead like that, what they want you to do, it's not that tight, is you take one bead, and we'll start off with just a clear green bead. Take one end, just one, thread it through, and then you take the other, and whichever direction you put this one through, you gotta put this one the opposite direction. And then, and this is pretty much every single time, with the exception of a couple of fiddly ones when you get a little farther along, this is what you'll have to do every single row. So you pull it through back either each way, and what you've done is you've essentially trapped that bead right there. The next row for the gecko is two beads. So we'll take two beads and we'll keep them in the green for now and wait until it gets to his body to do the sparkly ones, because I love the sparkly ones. So two beads, same as second verse, same as the first. We'll just put two beads on this one and then take the other string and try to keep them getting knotted up. Gimp doesn't tend to knot up, but it sometimes surprises you, so be aware. And we'll put 
two in here. And then pull it up. And be careful not to pull it too tight. I've done it before where I pulled it too tight and my animal was like caving in on itself. So snug but not tight. You'll figure it out um, after you do it. So the next one is, let's see if I can focus, the wreath. So we're just making his head and we're starting in his nose and going to his skull, or his head of the gecko. And this is where I decided to put my eyeballs. So you want to make your gecko have eyes so he can see. So what you're going to do is you're going to put them on in a pattern of, because the eyeballs are on the outside, black and then green and then black. And then if you do that, he'll have eyeballs, which is really fun and helpful. So there's that one. That's three rows down. The next one shows us doing two. So we'll do two more. And then the next row after this is where it starts to get interesting. Two. Two. Pull through. All right. So that's going to start down to his neck. Now, because we read his neck, the next one we're going to do is his arms. So his arms get a little tricky, and this is where you need might need a grown-up's help. You're going to see this pattern. It looks like you pull it through two, and then you put it just one string through three of them in a circle. And I'll show you how to do that, because it looks a lot more complicated than it is. So we're going to work on one side at a time. We don't pull both sides this time. The best thing to do is just, it's, it's five beads all together. So we're going to get five beads. Let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five, and we'll just string them all on at once, okay? Now it shows that you put the string one time through three of them, you loop it through three, and then it goes through twice with two of them. So all you have to do is first, I find it's easier to pull it all the way down to the body before you do this, or else you gotta string them and it's, it's, it's a kerfluffle. So then you take these two beads and you just, String through just those two by themselves. And then as you pull, the other beads will fall into a little arm. If you can see that. A little hand. So then we'll do the other side. One, two, three, four. Verse, same as the first. Oh, don't run away. This is why I like to do this on the floor because the beads don't roll around as much if they're on the carpet. Okay, all the way up. And then we find these two because his three are going to be the paw or his little hand. Run it through like this. And then, there we have his arms. So next we're gonna work on his body. And what you'll do is you're gonna follow the pattern of what they say to do, how many beads in each row. Um, oh no, I think, and sometimes you might have to go back and snug things up a little bit because they might start to loosen. A little loose is better than a little tight, but you definitely wanna make sure you can still see what the animal is. So, we're gonna keep working on our gecko and I'm going to just walk through it uh, as we go and I'm going to do some patterns of uh, some sparklies because I'm all about the sparkle and I'm also going to talk to you about some fun facts about geckos because this can be a little boring. So did you know that geckos range in size from teeny tiny to huge? The smallest gecko is the dwarf gecko and it only grows to one half of an inch long. On the other side the uh, New Caledonian gecko. Oh, that's going to be all types weird. 
New Caledonian gecko can get to four, between 14 and 17 inches in length and can weigh like 10 to 12 ounces, which is crazy, crazy big. Geckos are found on every continent on Earth, except for Antarctica. Be careful when you're stringing your beads that you are keeping the gimp relatively flat. It tends to twist sometimes, and that can make it look a little weird. It doesn't make it look bad. It just, I, I like it to look pretty. So I tend to make sure they all, they're all nice and flat going straight down the sides, because if it twists here, you can tell. Gecko skin. Did you know it is covered in a tiny hair-like spine? Oh, millions and millions of little tiny hair-like spines that can cause water to beat up and roll off like its own little waterproofing. And when it does beat off and splash off, it also takes any dust that's on their skin away. So kind of geckos are self-cleaning. Geckos typically eat fruit insects and they eat flower nectar, making them omnivores. Yeah, I've got a little twisty thing going on here. There we go. Come on. Sometimes I find it's nice to, it's, it's fun to talk to your little beads as you go because it makes it work better. At least I think so. Now we're going to four beads. So I'm going to keep my pattern of sparkly on the outside and plain beads on the inside. Like I said, some of these kits, you'll come with uh, different uh, varieties of beads. So they'll all be green, but they'll, my, you might have more opaque beads or you may have more clear, uh, but they're all gonna be green. So that's, that's kind of cool. That's the important bit. So now we're doing rows of four, and this is gonna be his belly. We'll do two of these and then we'll start to go down to his legs. And his legs are done very, very much the same as his arms were done, where they were five beads, and then you go around and do into the last two, the first two. So you've got sparkly, green. I just realized I was doing that off camera, sorry guys. It's regular green. And sparkly one. I love the sparkly ones. They're my favorite. Let, let me know in the comments if you have any really neat gecko facts that I didn't talk about today. Because I know you guys probably know all about your animals. So also, did you know that a Gecko's tail stores fat, just like a camel's hump stores fat, so that when food is scarce, they don't have to worry about it. They can just live off the stored fat in their tail. And I'm sure you've heard that gecko's tails can break off. They actually have little score marks or like pre-weakened spots in their tails that are there so that it's easily, they easily come off. And that way they can regrow their tails if an animal tries to grab at them. Now your tails on your little beaded guy are gonna be stuck, so don't try to grab them off, cause you know, that's a bad idea. Let's see, we're going to go down to two, let me do two sparklies. And then we're gonna work on his legs. And after that is his tail, and that's a little bit different as well. And we'll show you. Two. And now we're just starting his legs. Again, five beads, just like the arms. Just the last two, thank you very much. I 
again, sometimes, you know, you don't line it up quite right and you have to fiddle with it, and that's fine too. Until you tie it off, you can fiddle with it as much as you need to. It's super easy to do. So then the cord, rinse and repeat. Do the same thing on the other side. He needs two legs after all, two arms. One, two, three, four, five. And sometimes they get a little difficult and that's okay. Just keep trying. If you have any trouble getting these, you can always ask a grown-up for help. Or even an older sibling or an older friend who's there with you, they might be able to help you out. And help you get these all where they need to be. Sometimes I have trouble with it. Okay. So now we have two legs and two arms and a body. So next is the tail. This one has you doing two more beads for the booty, for his little butt, before we start on his tail. All right, just like everything else, we will get this one through here. And at this point, oh, what did I do here? I got it started through the wrong direction. That's silly. Awesome. The best thing to do when you have it twisted is just to take the one end, straighten it out, and then twist it the same direction, or the opposite direction on the other end. That usually helps get it lined up where it needs to be. Right, there's his booty. So now we need to do his tail. His tail, let's make sure you get it up there, okay, there we go. His tail has one, two, three, four beads that you put both strings straight through, and then one, two, three, four, five beads that you you weave like you normally would. So we'll do, those are gonna be the straight, let's do, you can do whatever color combination you like, but I'm just gonna do four of the plain green beads. One, come on. Two. Oh, and you can do that with both of them at the same time, it saves you a bit of time too, just, you know, Either or you can do it separately, it's up to you. There's two. It just makes it look different, that's all. All right, make sure those are all even, that she's not. Line it up nice and straight. All right, why are you all crooked? Get back in your, get back where you're supposed to be. Okay. So, it might take a little bit of fiddling and maybe keep that a little loose for now until you get your beads started. So I'm gonna do his tail tail, the end of it, in sparkles because why not? He needs to straighten his tail out. I don't know what he's having an issue with here. Uh, get in here. Okay. You can always adjust that later. It's not like it's, like I said, until you actually cut the tail, the, uh, the string off and tie it in a knot, you can pretty much adjust these guys however you need to. So we got one, two, Three. Come back. 
four. Oh, and one other thing about geckos, like all reptiles, they lay eggs and they hatch their young. Alright, so once you get your last and fifth bead on his tail, go ahead and uh, zhuzh around little pieces and see if we can get them all straightened out and where they need to be he's being a little difficult today. So, once you get your last bead on there, you're going to tie it. Just an overhand knot, okay? Just like that. And then you're gonna tie another overhand knot. Essentially, you're gonna make a square knot. You can do any kind of knot that's secure for you, but this is the one that I found works best when I can get my fingers to work. Oh my goodness, come on, break it all, there we go. All right, get a nice little tug and leave on some end. Like I said, they give you plenty of extra. Don't worry about that. And then we'll just give it a little snip, about maybe give about an inch and a half at the end, just in case, you know, things go sideways. And then you can release him from his prison. And Ricky the Gecko is done. Is the end of the Wriggling Reptiles Take and Make Kit video tutorial. Today we learned how to make Coils the snake. We learned how to make Ricky the gecko. And we learned how to make Leaps the frog. I do hope you enjoy this one. I hope you get creative. Make him whatever pattern you like. You can give him whatever name you like, too. And if you share this with your friends, like I said, it's really easy to do more of these. And if you go on the internet and search anything bead craft, beaded animal related, you're going to come up with. I swear, a bazillion <laughs> search hits um, with lots of different animals. Uh, the other kits um, are awesome ocean life and marvelous mammals, and they will have a video as well if this isn't what you're looking for. Or if you have a friend who got the same, a different kit. This is Vicki. I am signing off for the moment, and I'll see you on the next video.